All right, welcome back to Computer Science Intro to Programming 1. Uh, this is COC A211. Uh, this is Chapter 6, Part 3. All right, so we are just talking about uh, various aspects of sending information uh, parameter to uh, uh, um, or sending an argument to a function to be treated as a parameter. And again, um, so you'll see this occasionally, but I won't refer to it as formal parameters or formal arguments or actual parameters or actual arguments. Um, it's a little bit weird terminology. However, the, to, to, to clean things up a little bit again, you'll, I will consistently, and I won't hold it against you if you do it too, uh, uh, mix the terms argument versus parameter. Okay, they're, they're pretty much the same, but again, it's a matter of perspective. Um, argument goes to a function, parameter is from a function, it's a point of view from a function. So um, it's, Subtle, but there, there are two terms that are subtly different, but there you can use them interchangeably for our purposes. Um, so uh, yeah, we uh, when you have uh, when you create a function, uh, any information that you get, if you have to create, if you want to send information to a function or receive it from a function within a function as a parameter or an argument or whatever you want to call it, um, you always have to set the um, uh, the actual data type. Okay, so be very careful about that. Now. Um, in the prototype, all you have to do is define the data type. You don't actually technically have to declare the variable, uh, uh, not the variable name that you want it to be stored as. But go ahead and put it in there. So in the prototype here, I would put the semi or put the num. Okay. But in the actual header, you have to declare the variable type and um, the variable name again. Just do them both the same, please. Um, I won't take off points if you forget, if you leave off num in the prototype, but it won't work if you leave off num in the header and it's just easier to make them the same. Um, and again, you can um, send, a, so I call it by this this last line there, it's a function call. Um, so be careful about this. Um, by default, and we'll talk about this in the next section very shortly here, all data is being stored, the value of that data is being stored. It's actually going to be a copy of that value, okay? And that's being passed by value versus being passed by reference, which we'll get to later. Um, so if a value, if information is being sent to a function, it's actually the, uh, the computer goes and actually makes a copy of it before for that function to use. The function does whatever it needs to do and then returns the control back to the, the main or the calling area of the uh, probably the main function. Um, but it's actually copied into or made a copy of. So if you make changes to the values, um, there's the, the data that's being sent to the function within the function, it won't keep, it'll go back to what it was when, you know, before the function was called. So be careful about that. Um, also that value, those variables that you create, any variables you create within a function or as the parameters of the function, those variables have a limited lifetime. Once that function's done being called, they go away. Okay, so be careful about that. Um, functions can also have multiple parameters, which we'll talk about in the next chap next section. Um, and you just separate with a comma, okay? Make sure though that the order is clear, and we'll talk about that as we get going here, okay? Um, so, yeah, keep the prototype and the headers the same as I was mentioned before. Um, and if you send, like, a, um, if it's expecting an integer and you send a floating point value, well, it's going to demote, be demoted to a integer, okay? So it's going to be converted and basically truncated. So be careful about that. Make sure the data type that you expect is the same as the data type that you send and vice versa, okay? Just be cautious when you're using it. Not cautious, but you'll be... No, uh, yeah, cognizant of that. Um, so we now we'll talk about sending multiple arguments to a function, and you can send as many arguments within reason as you want. Generally speaking, you want to limit it to three or four at most. Um, most functions take one or two, or I guess sometimes none. Um, it doesn't have to have any uh, parameters sent to it. Um, but most functions take one or two items um, or two uh, arguments. But it can be a lot more. Um, but be reasonable about it. Um, so the 
number of arguments that a function expects needs to be, it, when you call the function, it needs to be the same as the number of arguments ex it expects. So be careful about that. So they both must line up with the prototype and header and the call. So there's three things that you have to worry about there. Um, and the order is extremely important and so is the data type. If you mess up the data type and the order, your function won't work or won't, it won't mail, you know, get weird. Okay, so the order is important. The order is up to you, but whatever you decide the order to be uh, for the definition, make sure in the header it's set the same as the prototype and make sure that the calling function or where you call it, from where you call it, you, you send it in the right order. Okay, it's as simple as that. Um, so again, this is that terribly design, terribly annoying um, prototype, and you notice that at first glance, I don't know exactly what show sum does, but if I look at the um, uh, the function header instead of the function prototype, I have num1, num2, and num3, and I kind of give a little bit more information. So I would have put num1, num2, num3 in line six. It makes it prettier, it makes it cleaner, okay? But notice that also that I'm going to, you know, get three values, which again, I don't like the way they're getting those three values in line 15, but separate down lines, please. I'm putting on separate lines, but regardless. Um, in line 18, you're calling show sum, and it's all that's doing is adding it together um, and printing it out. Um, and notice it's not returning the actual adding of the things, it's just showing it. Okay, it's not, it's adding them together as such, but it's only going to display. It doesn't give you the result of that other than print it on the screen. So there's a subtle but important difference there. And it's sending value one, value two, value three. When it's called, sent to the function, those those three values are getting, going to get mapped into num1, num2, and num3, get used by the function, basically. The function only does line 29, and it's going to print the results. So if I send it 487, like in the little area, the example of uh, being run in the little blue section there, um, it's going to add those together and print out the result and just put it on the next line, 19. So it's pretty simple, but keep in mind that those actually get copied. Those, those val the, the values stored in value one, value two, and value three get copied into num1, num2, and num3. And in that specific order, value one goes to num1, okay? And if I messed up the order of these, it would change, well, it wouldn't change really the, uh, the uh, functionality of the program, but it would change what gets put to where, okay? Now, the, so most of the data as we were talking about is going to get sent by value. Um, and what that means is that the when data is sent by value, that's just by default for most things, um, it's copied into the parameter, okay, as we were saying. So um, if you make changes to the data, it won't affect anything. So if I send you know, a variable with the value of five to a function, then it's, and I make changes to it, it's not a big deal. It doesn't, it, it's still going to be that, well, let's just get into it. Okay, um, so if I have value of uh, val equals five and I have a function even or odd and I go and change val to something else, um, it's still gonna be the same when it actually is done. Okay, this is, this is actually a very confusing slide, but it, it gets copied into the function num or the variable num for the function. If I change anything for num, Oh well, it doesn't affect the variable at all. Even if they're named the same thing, and a function can be named, have the same name, variable name as the variable that gets sent to it. That's perfectly fine. It happens commonly if you write your function well because there's a logic to writing your function and there's a logic to using it and they're kind of the same. So it's not unusual for it to be um, have the same variable name, but they are different variables. One is local to the function, one is local to the area calling the function, and the two do not interact. So they are completely separate. The, variable, the data stored in the local function or local area is copied into a variable used by the function and it can be changed and done or whatever and then when the function is done 
it doesn't change anything uh, for the actual originally calling area. All right, we are going to pause here.